Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, The Reunion Part 2. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys. So we start where we ended last week, which was with LaToya joining the ladies on stage. And remember, LaToya is not too happy. Anyway, let's, let's talk about the problems with Drew and LaToya. Okay, they show the package of them getting into it. First about the wig, Drewisha. Okay, then about uh, Drew telling um, Fallon that LaToya doesn't care anything about husbands, doesn't care anything about marriages, them two get into a confrontation about that, and then just the many other dust-ups that the two have had over the season. Evidently, they've had their moments where they've connected. Um, it hasn't been on camera, and for whatever reason, they haven't been able to connect when they're together as far as the show is concerned. And I said, well, that's easy because both of them are trying to have a moment. Both of them are trying to make their mark. Both of them are trying to secure the peach, okay? So uh, you get the real deal when the two of them are just hanging out, but then when we get on camera, then it's lights, camera, action. Cynthia said that the whole wig gate situation was stupid and petty. She knows that they always um, have moments where they, you know, say shady things about each other, but the wig thing just, it just went too far. Kenya said, yes, it did go too far. And she felt like, um, you know, she inserted herself and said that Drew even came for her after South Carolina. You know, she was posting on social media, um, something about her edges and tagging Kenya's, uh, Kenya Moore Hair Care Company. Um, and I guess Drew hasn't really uh, figured out the line between the TV show and actual real, real life, you know, talking about her business and whatever. Kenya was annoyed with that. Drew said that when you come for her, she doesn't care. You know, she's coming back at you. So it doesn't even matter. It's like all bets are off. She can do whatever she want to do. Drew's a little annoying. So then we get on to Latoya's uh, and Kenya's girl crushes on each other. Needless to say, Kenya says she's no longer um, in girl crush love with Latoya because Latoya has disappointed her over the time. Oh, really? How does she do that? She says, oh, she doesn't have the time to just tell you guys all of the things that she did. I think because Latoya acted a fool last season um, and Kenya was embarrassed by her actions, and, you know, they weren't really impressed with the things that LaToya did a few times. So, but, uh, you know, she had to come up with one reason. So why do you have a problem with LaToya? Well, she says that when they were in South Carolina, she feels like LaToya didn't stand up for her when she felt like the girls were going, um, you know, were kind of picking on her when they all went out to eat at the table. She felt like LaToya should have said something, should have taken up for her. And LaToya was like, well, I just thought that that was just, th there was really nothing for LaToya to say in that moment. I was just like, okay, can you might be reaching a little bit. That wasn't LaToya's place to be coming. They were having a discussion. You guys were all having a discussion. So LaToya trying to take up for her, I didn't see it that way. But what I did have a problem with LaToya with, and I think most of us did, was when LaToya was telling her business to Marlo and Shamia and Portia and Drew, okay? And um, Kenya said she tried to act like she's stupid, but she's not the stupidest person here, okay? Um, she knows, I've told her plenty of times, all you have to do is watch all of the seasons and know the way that Kenya feels about, at that time, Marlo and, well, I don't know, I think her and Marlo had made friends by then, but talking about um, Drew and, well, more so, no, it was Marlo and Portia. And um, she said Drew, she won't even worry about Drew because Drew was molded by Portia, okay? Drew hasn't been around long enough, but at least she should know that her feelings towards Marlo and Portia at the time, that was not the time and the place for you to be telling the business. That was the main reason why Kenya had a problem with Drew. And she should have because Drew was talking out of turn and running her mouth and trying to, you know, ride in that fence. And we don't like that choose a side and stay on it. But as far as the girl crush thing, Andy says, I didn't even realize that you were in the girls. And she was like, I'm not, that's the whole point, okay? But um, nothing happened with her and, and uh, LaToya. You know, it was just something cute for the camera. She hasn't seen me naked. She hasn't kissed me. I haven't done anything with her. And LaToya was like, oh, I haven't seen you naked. And she was like, oh, well, um, yeah, she did actually see. And LaToya said, you didn't show me your booty? And she says, oh, I showed her some cellulite. 
that she wanted to get rid of, okay? But other than that, I knew to Kenya and Latoya wasn't doing anything. It was just whatever. But Candy says that she was surprised how quickly um, Kenya took to Latoya because normally Kenya doesn't trust something, you know, a new person coming in that that easily. And then Latoya has a little something to drop uh, for the audience tonight. Oh, what is that, Latoya? She says that she and Drew also kissed the night uh, that Bolo was at the house in South Carolina, you know, and um, Drew was like, what? I, we, I, we did not kiss. Okay. Yes, you did. You kissed me. You cheated on your husband. Candy was laughing because she was like, yeah, you did kiss her. Even Portia said that she kissed her. You know, Portia was trying to figure out if she remembered or not. Oh, you know what? I think a whole lot more happened that night. And um, I guess in order to just not be blasting everybody and everything, they only harped on the fact that Portia was fucking on Bolo. But it sounded like it was more stuff going on there. And you could tell by the way the ladies were reacting to some of the things that was being said. So mm -hmm. I do think that Drew Latoya, they might have just did a quick little smooch, but something happened. But whatever, LaToya doesn't understand why Kenya was always so hard on her and not mad at Candy. Well, we talked about this during the season, okay? So, you know, she told Marlo and Portia the information, but Candy told Don Juan. Candy was just like, it was a bad idea for you to say it, and it was a bad idea for me to say it, okay? Should have just not even been gossiping about that, especially not on camera. We bring on Shamia and Marlo, and I'm gonna tell you what, you can say whatever you want about Marlo. Marlo is full of shit, okay? Marlo is full of the drama. Marlo always is, um, you know, creating some sort of havoc where it doesn't need to be any, but Marlo looks great. Oh my God. Ooh wee, child, that little outfit that she had on. And when I say little, it was little, okay? It just barely covered the necessities. But when your body looks like that, I don't give a fuck if it is from liposuction or what. She looks great, okay? Um, even Andy said that he's straight right now. So yeah, she looked good and she knew it, all right? So I was like, okay, you know, Marlo never really disappoints me. I mean, she's had a few little moments on the show, but if you follow Marlo on Instagram, she's always, 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 sharp. So we ain't gonna take that away from her. But that Marlo is full of shit, y'all. Anyway, <clears throat> she and Shamia come out. Um, Sh Sh Shamia missed it for me. <laughs> Andy was just like, uh, uh, what is it? What is it that you're, um, you know, what are you giving tonight? And uh, <laughs> Marlo said, coming to America. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it was giving me uh, Y'all, I told you guys plenty of times, I don't like that hairdo when people pull their hair up and then it'd be just uh, in a ponytail and then the back part be, I do not like that style of grown women. It, is just not, it just looks like a childish hairstyle to me. So I wasn't feeling it. The, her whole look, I just wasn't there for, you know, when, when, um, <clears throat> When uh, she, when Shamia saw Marlo, you know, she was saying, oh yeah, that's definitely a liposuction body. I don't give a damn because most of the women on the show have had work done. I think all of the women on the show, the housewives, maybe not Drew, okay? But the rest of the women um, have had work done. So if it's done right and if it looks good, you can't hate on the liposuction body, okay? So yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> Shamia was definitely having a bone to pick with Marlo. You know, it doesn't make sense on the show why she has a problem with her. But you guys tell me that evidently Marlo must have said when they was in New Orleans or they was in South Carolina, wherever they was, that she would sleep with um, Shamia's husband. So I guess that's supposed to be the reason why now Shamia just really hates Marlo. I need to know the context. I, I need to know the whole full story of why all of a sudden Shamia just really, really hates Marlo. Okay, it's got to be more to that story. And really, I'm trying to figure out who who wants Shamia's husband, <laughs> Issa Rae. <laughs> Y'all know her husband look like Issa Rae. <laughs> All right. I see that picture of him smiling. I said, look at Shamia and Issa Rae. Where they on vacation at? It was her husband. <laughs> All right. Him. <laughs> 
So anyway, we got Marlo and Shamia out there, but we're still talking about Kenya and Candy, how Candy gives Kenya a pass quite a bit um, for Kenya's messiness. Candy does give Kenya a pass. I think she feels um, sorry for her. Um, and I think maybe she realizes how Kenya is um, beneath all of the shit, okay? So Candy, I think, considers Kenya a good friend, so she does give her quite a bit of leeway, okay? The only time that Candy really got mad at Kenya is when she ain't had no damn food in South Carolina because y'all know Candy gets hangry, okay? And um, she was mad. Kenya said she was only thinking about herself when she ordered that food, which I still think is just terrible because you are the host of a party. You, she said she didn't feel like asking 12 women, you know, what they wanted. It was just like, I mean, you could have ordered them a pizza at that point, Okay, if you didn't want to ask, you knew it was going to be enough pizza for everybody. I mean, something. These women sitting up here starving and here you go with the crab cakes? I don't think so. We start up on the whole bringing the kids on the trip to South Carolina. And you guys, bottom line is nobody wanted to bring them kids. All right, Kenya brought Brooklyn because she didn't feel comfortable leaving her with a nanny fine. But everybody else... You know, they didn't. Candy said, well, I was always told by production that we should not bring the kids on trips. But I felt like Kenya brought Brooklyn so that she wouldn't have to deal with the ladies later on in the day. That she could use Brooklyn as an escape and have to be with Brooklyn and not be with all of the shenanigans. But we see that Kenya was able to at least keep going up and down them damn stairs to see what was going on with Bolo and the rest of the girls. So... She was still there. Drew, why did you tell on Kenya the fact that she was bring, you know, going out there on the private jet even when she asked you not to? And Drew said she wasn't telling on her. She was holding her accountable. And I was like, now, Drew, okay? When somebody tells you something in confidence, why is it that you feel that it's up to you to actually tell their business, okay? They was going to find out anyway. It's not up to you to, to say that you was holding her accountable. I was just like, oh, my so self-righteous. Come on, Drew. Drew felt like she was lying to her friends and she just didn't like that. She felt like, you know, this is a sisterhood and everybody should be telling the truth. Okay. So yeah, Drew and Kenya, mm -mm, they never got along. But Kenya says, hey, we did actually have some moments where we did have, you know, sit and talk. We had some things in common the same way that Drew and Latoya did off camera, evidently Kenya and Drew had some good times off camera as well. I Drew gave a party and Kenya complimented her and said, girl, you better give a housewives party. You know how to give a party. And, you know, she complimented her there. And then she said at one time, Drew reached out to her and was having body issues. And, you know, Kenya was like, girl, just come and put a Spanx on or something. And then Drew got upset. Oh, so you want to tell my business? You know, you are always, you want to say something. Okay. All right. I have a condition where, whatever she the name of the condition is, where tissues grow up my abdomen. It's very painful and around that time of the month. It's, you know, painful for my uterus and everything. And now I have to have a hysterectomy. I went to Dr. Jackie. So I hope you're happy that you told my business. I said, girl, you told your business. Ain't no way that we would have came to the conclusion that you need a hysterectomy by Kenya saying that you have body issues, okay? Nobody needed to know all of that information unless you wanted them to know all of that information. So stop it. Ooh, that Drew. She's special. Y'all y'all say that she's coming back next season. Um, at least that's the bet that people are willing to place. Um, I think... If I were to really be a betting woman, yeah, I think that Drew probably will be back next season, but <clears throat> we'll see. Then we move on to Cynthia and hashtag chill. You know, she's very happy, okay? Um, hashtag chill is at the house on the hill, okay? Um, at Lake Bailey on the hill, excuse me. And remember she told, well, they told us at the end of the season that um, hashtag chill is taking on a job here in Atlanta, no, they didn't tell us that. They just said that he's moving to Atlanta permanently. She told us that he has a show um, that actually is going to be filmed or recorded here in Atlanta. So he has to move here now. Atlanta, y'all, is becoming the new black. I mean, it's not even the black Hollywood. It's the new Hollywood. So many studios are moving here and filming and doing things. So um, that's good. Cynthia doesn't have to relocate to Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. Do you want to hear the mean tweets about the wedding? She says, okay, sure. You know, people were asking her why she felt it was important to have a, you know, so, so many guests at a, um, you know, at a time where the world, where we're in a pandemic. And she said that she did it responsibly. And as far as she knew, nobody got sick. I was like, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody asked why she had a lavish second wedding, you know, and she said, well, her first wedding was nice, but she was just in a totally different headspace. You know, she really wanted to, I mean, people can do what they want to do. You know, let the woman, if she got the money to pay this big wedding and everybody wanted to come, then fine. Somebody noticed that one of uh, Hashtag Chill's daughters wasn't there. I guess that might have been the one that had the issue when um, he was talking to his friends and saying something about the baby mama, which was the girl's mother. I think that that's the daughter that wasn't there. Um, and I could tell Cynthia didn't want to bring any of that issue onto the TV. She just said that she... Um, he was supposed to walk with her down the aisle. He probably was upset, but it just didn't work out. Okay, we kind of squashed that real fast. I was like, oh, what's this? As far as the post nup is um, concerned, have you got it done yet? She looks over at Candy and was just like, we're gonna get it done. And you know, Candy was just like, mm. any any advice from Candy? Get it done. Okay, Candy don't play that. And really, when you are somebody like Cynthia Bailey and even Mike Hill, them two really do need to have some sort of something in place because they both have had before they got with each other. So we need to really make sure that we separate and make clear who gets what in the event something bad goes, you know, goes down. So it is a responsible thing to do. Then you guys, <clears throat> We go down the history of um, Candy and Portia's relationship. The ups and the downs, the really bad times, the times where they finally made it back to each other. And then it looks like genuinely these two were willing to let bygones be bygones. Marlo says, I think, I think the done. I can't do Marlo's voice today, you guys. The allergies, it's just too much. She says that she feels like the dungeon is what brought um, Candy and Portia together. You know, she said that she was close to Portia when everything was going down. And, you know, she was just so enamored with Candy. Everything was candy, candy, candy. And, you know, she just loved Candy. And, you know, they, they are closer because I was like, and they both was sitting there looking at Marlo like, what are you talking about? They were not. Candy, 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 Portia, Portia, Portia. As a matter of fact, we remember when Candy and Portia on the reunion said that they were going to get past it and forget it. And it still took Candy a whole nother season and a half to really truly where we felt like it was sincere when they were out of town, when they were out the country, when Candy finally did move on. Because when, when Candy and Portia said that at the reunion, Candy still wasn't there. She still had a problem with her that full next season, okay? So it, it wasn't genuine. It wasn't sincere. It took still took some time. So I don't know what Marlo is talking about. Andy asked, why did Candy have such a hard time getting over it? And, Ken, and uh, Kenya says that, um, well, because she was done wrong. People lied on her and said things. You know, she can forgive somebody or something, but she can't forget it. So she's still working through that process. And I think now Candy realizes that everybody knows that Portia was lying or Portia was passing out the lies that Phaedra had fed to her. And um, so she, you know, she's moved on. Like, like many of you guys have said, Candy is happy in her life, in her relationship, in her um, career, in her businesses. And she just, all of the shit that happens on the show now is just really just like, it's just water off a duck's back. She don't worry herself about it or anything. Candy is not even given that kind of energy anymore on the show. As a matter of fact, she said that she and um, Portia, she felt like they were in the best place this season. And then when she started supporting Don Juan, I was just like, oh, what is this? This is really a big difference now, okay? Even went back and followed her on social media. Kenya said that they on mute. <laughs> that shit is funny. Right, now let's talk about the dungeon. I really thought that this was going to be a more explosive um, part of the reunion. You know, usually episode two of the reunion is where all the shit goes down. The first one is the build up to the shit that happens in the second one. And then the third one is just sort of like all the little leftover pieces that we needed to talk about. And I was just like, ain't nothing happening really in this one. So I'm thinking the dungeon section, this discussion was gonna be it, okay? So uh, yeah, Bolo and all of that. <clears throat> Andy says, Candy, what's my name? 
you know? And uh, Candy says, hmm, your name is Silver Bullet. Oh, Silver Bullet. Oh, <laughs> we get a good little giggle off of that. Okay, Andy loves it. Um, Andy says, I know that your bedroom candy must, must have skyrocketed. And she says, oh yeah, all right. Candy's smart now. She gonna make sure she make a coin off of anything that she does on this show. And she even tells us, I'm about to put together a virtual dungeon where the ladies can go online and see what's going on and see the men. Candy always coming up with an idea, coming up with a way. So Andy starts asking them about the night, you know, Kenya being chocolate, you know, wow, Kenya, you really did let your inhibitions loose. And she said that she, um, you know, it was just fun. She was just holding true to the theme and she was able to live as this chocolate person. We all remember that Portia, or should I say, um, peach juice and chocolate got along well. You know, Portia was just like, I got me, me, listen, me and chocolate got along well. I don't know about Kenya, but chocolate, we had us a good time. Andy says, what was going on with the coffee table? Oh, then everybody kind of starts smiling. All right, kind of blushing. And I was like, well, what, what happened with the coffee table? All right. Portia says, well, it came back to me that um, Toya was doing like a thingy thing on me. <laughs> Evidently, Por uh, Portia laid back on that table and Toya was, had her face in the place. I was like, what? You know, Portia was just like, she didn't have her clothes off or nothing. And then, and then um, Andy says, yeah, but that little piece of thing that you had on on the bottom, you know, Latoya said, I could have just slid that on. I said, oh. In the way that Candy was kind of laughing and the girls was kind of looking around, I said, oh, so there is more that happened. Isn't it something that they only concentrated on the bolo situation when there was way more that was happening that night? I mean, we got out of today that Drew kissed LaToya. LaToya had a face in the place of Portia. Like, what else was going on there? But Andy still loved it. He felt like it was you know, freedom and sexuality, you know, that was the theme of the night. And it was sort of revolutionary to see these women on there and just really having a good ass time. We all still laughing about the night. And then Marlo was just like, I, I feel like there's an elephant in the room we need to address. Oh, Marlo, what is the elephant in the room? From this point on is where I tell you that Marlo's full of shit. I really think that Marlo wants Portia to admit that she slept with Bolo. But I don't know why that's so important to Marlo. What will that do for Marlo? I'm not sure. But her fussing at Portia is just like, I'm just like, girl, what are you talking about? When she said, for you to be so mean and nasty, but sit up here like you're this queen. Portia was just like, nasty. Did you see when she did that? <laughs> I cracked up laughing because she was like really trying to push Marlo's buttons. And then when Marlo mentioned the crown, uh, Portia was just like, I don't even have it all, but I'm glad that you still see it. <laughs> that was the line of the night, y'all. So yeah, anyway, Portia kept on saying, Marlo knows exactly what she's trying to do. And I'm just like, what is she trying to do? Okay, I mean, I know what I think that she's trying to do. She's just trying to make sure that she stirs up enough drama so that she can stay in position on the show because now that she's made friends with Kenya, okay, she's aligned herself over there, but then still we need a little drama, okay? Because Marlo wouldn't be Marlo without it. And, um, you know, Marlo's going on and on how she knows what happened at the house and she didn't say anything and she has all of these secrets and all of this, but then... What, why do you feel like Portia be, should be telling a secret, telling her business, okay? I, I just can't get it. I don't understand what Marla was doing and all that fussing and talking at the end. I was just like, what? It almost felt like they were talking in circles or talking in riddles, trying not to say something. So that's why I had tweeted, like, did I miss what Marlo's saying? And people are like, no, Marlo's just trying to be Marlo and just talking and just be fussing. And she was upset because Portia wasn't really buying into it. And I said, okay, I just was making sure that I was clear because, you know, I'll get on here and say something and then y'all be done told me how wrong I am and how that wasn't really what happened and all that. So like I said, Marlo is still full of shit. Okay, Marlo is still full. She looked great. Oh, she looked great. I would love Marlo's body, but yeah, Marlo is just like, girl, come on now. This tired. 
If Portia don't want to say she fucked on Bolo, then she ain't got to say it. Let's move it on along. All right, you guys, I got to get off of here. I got to get to work, okay? You see how ugly it is outside? I was giving y'all a little scenery today, okay? We had to bring it on in the house today because y'all is raining and ugly and I didn't feel like moving cars around and all of that. So, in way. I'm going to get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is It's Rocks. And everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rockstars. Goodbye.